Uh, hello everyone and welcome to another video. So I just want to start this video off by saying uh, I'm sorry basically because how bad this video turned out to be. Um, I expected the result of this video to be better but there were some things that I didn't take into account. Uh, for example, uh, my Dell XPS had this has this 4K display and it was really difficult to record what I was doing on the screen when I was in the terminal because the text was so small. I tried to increase the font size, but it didn't really help a lot. Um, but yeah, and also I failed a lot during the installation of, of Linux in the process. But uh, I figured I would just post this video anyways, and maybe I can make it up for you and make another video where I actually show you how I usually install Linux and how I inst install all my programs and things like that, the window manager, you know. Um, but yeah, I guess this video will just show you how much of a struggle it can be sometimes, um, especially when you're installing Linux on a computer that you haven't installed Linux on before. Um, sometimes there are some problems that you didn't know about or things that you didn't know was going to happen. Um, I think one of the biggest problem I had when installing Linux on this Dell XPS 15 was that um, um, there were some settings in the BIOS that I had to disable and I didn't find out about this until I tried to install Ubuntu instead of Debian and the Ubuntu uh, installer showed me a warning about that um, I had to go to BIOS and disable some stuff. Um, so, and then after I did that, I was able to install Debian. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyways, here's the video. I'm sorry for for the bad quality of this this specific video. It's uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna make it up for you uh, someday. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another video. Now. I'm going to install Linux on my newly purchased Dell XPS 15 that I have here. And to assist me, I also have my other computer here in the background. Uh, if I need to look up some uh, problems on, on Stack Overflow or something, <laughs> hopefully I'm not going to have to do that. Um, yeah, I have prepared two things. And one thing is a USB with network drivers, um, proprietary network drivers. I think I'm going to need those. I'll put a link in the description to, to that. I also have a USB with, uh, with Debian on it. I'm going to install Debian Linux. So uh, yeah, let's get into it, I guess. Uh, I'm going to plug in the the uh, Debian USB in the laptop here somewhere. There we go. And I'm gonna boot it up by holding in, I think it's F12, uh, we'll see. I'll get back to you in a moment. So what I ended up doing was I plugged in the USB, I booted it up and I spammed the F2 key to get into the uh, the system configuration. So I think I have to configure a bit here. Uh, for example, I think we need to change the boot sequence here. I want to uh, prioritize the USB here, which is the SanDisk. So I'm gonna bring it upwards. I think that's what I wanna do. Uh, let's try and do it. Let's try and do that. Um, and I think we can actually remove the Windows Boot Manager, because I never want to boot into that. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Um, okay. And let's hit Apply. Are you sure you want to apply? Yes. Okay. Advanced Boot Options. Enable UFE Network Stack. I don't know. Um, date time, secure boot, 
uh, secure boot enable. I think we actually want to disable secure boot. Uh, yes. And we want to hit apply. Uh, okay. Um, system logs. I think that might be all for now. Virtualization. Okay, I think that's good. So let's hit exit. And hopefully it's gonna boot into my USB now. Or maybe I need to. Hopefully we're gonna, we're gonna see the uh, Debian logo here in a bit. Oh, there we go, Debian. Okay, and I'm gonna select. I'm gonna select uh, install, not the graphical install. I'm just gonna select install. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna use English. Cool. Let's do selected location. Okay. And I'm in Sweden actually, so Europe. Um, Sweden. I wasn't allowed to select that. Uh, oh, right. I'm supposed to select the keyboard language now. So let's do United States. It's actually uh, American keyboard layout on this one. Okay. Uh, United States, key map to use, American English. Uh, no Ethernet card was detected. If you know the name of the driver by your Ethernet card, you can select it from the list. Um, hmm. That's interesting. Uh, I'll get back to you in a moment. So according to Google, the card is called something like killer Wi-Fi network driver or something. But I didn't find that driver here. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna select the IWL Wi-Fi Intel wireless Wi-Fi driver for Linux. I know I used it before. I'm not sure it's gonna work here though, but we'll see, I guess. Um, I guess that didn't work. Uh, oh. Intel. No, it did not want me to do that. Um, Maybe we will just select none of the above. A driver for your hardware is not available. You may need to do drives from removable media such as USB stick or floppy. If you have such media available now, insert it and continue. Uh, okay, let's insert that USB then uh, and see if that helps. Hopefully I have another USB port here. Yes, I do. Load missing drivers from removable media. Yes, please. Uh, no kernel modules were found. This probably is due to mismatch between the kernel used by this version and the kernel version of the archive. 
If you're installing from memory, you can work around the problem by choosing to a different version of Debian. The installed will probably fail to work if you continue without kernel modules. Continue install without kernel modules. from removable media yes I'm afraid it's looking in the wrong back uh, I'll get back to you in a second okay hello so now I have been uh, fiddling with this laptop for like three hours I think I made the last video three hours ago and I went into the, uh, uh, well, I, I didn't manage to get Debian installed. So I thought, hey, let's try and install Ubuntu then, because I know Ubuntu is easier to install. Um, and then Ubuntu told me what was wrong, basically. And I had to, Ubuntu told me to go and disable um, Intel Rapid Storage, I think it was called. So I went and disabled that and then I rebooted my computer again, but with Debian in the USB. <laughs> uh, and then I downloaded a more recent version of the uh, Wi-Fi uh, firmware and put it in the other USB. And uh, now it actually works. Uh, so I'm seeing my Wi-Fi here. I think this is my Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go ahead and configure that. Uh, hmm. You choose if the network helps share the web. Choose if the network is pretty with pre-shared key. Hmm. I think it's this one, right? Okay, so now I need to enter the password. I'll be right back. So I entered my Wi-Fi password and I was able to connect. Um, so now it wants me to enter a host name. I'm just going to name it, uh, I don't know. Uh, Ian Nertsen. No, I don't know. Maybe just XPS. Let's just call it XPS, okay. Uh, I think that's fine. Domain name. Uh, let's skip that. Okay, root password, okay. There we go. Enter the password again. There we go. They're, they are not the same, okay. Let's do this more carefully. There we go. Full name for the new user. Ian Nertson. Username for account. Cool. Use a password. Okay. There we go. Okay, guided use the largest continuous free space. Use entire disk and we will write over windows. Um, yep, that's the disk I wanna use. Goodbye windows, all files in one partition, sure. Finish partitioning and write changes to disk, sure, sure.
This will be interesting. I'll get back in a while, guys. Well, I, when it's when it's done loading. Okay, so it finished loading whatever it was doing, and now I can select a network mirror. I'm gonna select the uh, um, deb.debian.org HTTP proxy blank configuring apt. All right, I'll get back in a bit when it's when it's finished loading. All right, so uh, Debian now asks me if I want to uh, participate in a survey. I'm gonna hit no. And now I'm able to select some packages. Um, I'm gonna unselect the Debian desktop environment. I'm gonna unselect GNOME. Uh, I'm going to select the SSH server because we're going to install i3 or DVM, so I don't want to select any of these. Uh, but yeah, there we go, SSH server and standard system utilities. Um, and we can continue. And I'll get back to you when this is done. So it's done and it tells me that the installation is complete and it's time to boot into my system and that I should remove the USB device. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hit continue here and pull them out. Okay, I'll see you soon. There we go. The USB devices are unplugged and it has booted into to, uh, to Debian here. Uh, the text is really small. I don't know if I'm going to be able to record what I'm doing here. Um, but I'm going to try and log in here. Uh, let's type my username. And the password. And then we're in. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to see if I can change the size of the text. Uh, I'll be right back. So I managed to increase the font size a little bit, but it's still very difficult to see. Uh, anyway, I'm going to run apt update. And apt upgrade. Let's not have a release file. Oh, I see. I see. So I edited my sources.list and I managed to run apt update, apt upgrade. Now I'm going to start by installing or searching for um, NM2. Uh, I think that's what it's called. NM. And then, oh. Anyway, I'm gonna install NM2, it's a Wi-Fi thing. All right, there we go. I'm really sorry that this text is so difficult to see here, but um, I installed Network Manager, that was the package. And now I'm going to install some basic packages like uh, Git and uh, sudo. Oh, sorry, we don't have sudo. We're going to install apt install actually we're going to install sudo because I want to be able to do things with my other user and now we're going to do C 
pseudo. And I'm going to add my name to the sudoers list here. There we go. Now I'm able to run sudo with my Ionerson user. So I'm going to install sudo apt install. And I'm going to install i3. I want git. I want Chromium. So yeah, we're going to install i3 on this laptop and maybe I'll make another video where I migrate to DVM. We're going to start with i3. So I'm going to start with installing i3, Git and Chromium. And yeah, let's start with that. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit yes. And I'm going to wait for that to load. Okay, so it finished installing the packages. And now I'm basically just gonna clone down, set up Git and clone down my i3 config files for my GitHub. So um, I'll get back when I've done that. So I cloned down my repository and now I'm going to install the Xorg server so that I can run uh, the graphical or the window manager. And there we go. I am, I booted into my i3 we know manager, uh, things are working, sort of. And uh, yeah, I have successfully installed Linux. That's all for this video. I'm sorry for the bad quality of this video. I didn't know the text was going to be that small. I guess that's the price you have to pay when you get a 4K monitor, 4K display. But anyway, um, I'm really tired right now. Unfortunately, we didn't install DVM. Maybe I'll migrate to, day, to that another day and make a video of that. But right now, I kind of just want to go to bed, to be honest. I'm really tired. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.